Yes, I can see that. Mm -hmm. All right. We're at uh, 150 attendees for this webinar, and maybe we can get started right on time. Right, Chand? Yeah, I'm set. Go ready? ahead. Mm. Okay, fantastic. Uh, very good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, welcome to the webinar titled Pitching to Perfection. Um, if you're here today, it's because this is an exclusive webinar. Uh, meant for iPitch applicants, uh, where we've come from the understanding that, you know, while there are so many different accelerator incubator programs happening, um, you know, how can you really put your best foot forward? And uh, it's with that thinking uh, that we decided to bring, uh, you know, our expert, Mr. Chan Das on board um, to help share his insights with you. Um, before I get to introducing Chant, I would just like to share a little bit about, um, you know, how iPitch was designed a little differently this year. Um, so first and foremost, my name is Janan, and uh, I work with Vilgro. Uh, I look into diversity and inclusion as well as our operations at Vilgro. Along with me today is also my uh, colleague Akshita. Uh, she's also played a very, very instrumental role uh, in the entire iPitch campaign that you've all been witnessing for the last one month. Um, so as you know, Vilgro is uh, an incubator for social enterprises. Um, we were one of the foremost social enterprise incubators in the country. We've worked with over 300 uh, enterprises so far. Uh, and for us to be able to really help companies achieve scale, go to market, make the right connections, um, we believe that's the strongest way to actually achieve impact at the bottom of the pyramid. Um, about iPitch this year, as you all know, with the pandemic, uh, you know, since we host iPitch every year, we spend a lot of time, a lot of effort on creating a, a platform for entrepreneurs and incubators and investors to get connected. We thought, how can we leverage this platform this year to really, really expand the scope, to really help more entrepreneurs gain access to capital, gain access to um, uh, mentoring as well, to gain access to expertise. Um, with that, that we designed uh, iPitch this year. So you will see that even the kind of partners that we have on board, so right from Shell Foundation to Habitat for Humanity, Beyond Capital Fund, uh, Caspian Debt, and Upaya Social Ventures, all of them look at a various, a wide range of uh, enterprises in terms of stage, but also in terms of the kind of sectors we're looking for. Um, so we really wanted to be able to open it up uh, and something that you can expect as an entrepreneur who has applied to iPitch uh, over the next month, uh, all of our partners as well as well as Bilgro will be reviewing each of your applications. You will hear from us by the end of the month uh, if you've been shortlisted. If you have been shortlisted, you will be receiving uh, some briefing sessions, some coaching on what is it that your uh, that the investor that has selected you, what is it that they want to hear uh, during the pitch. Uh, if you haven't been shortlisted, there's really nothing to worry about because this is something that, uh, you know, this list of applications is something that we use throughout the year. Um, all of our, our partners as well uh, use this pipeline for the rest of the year, for years to come. Uh, we build relationships with entrepreneurs where we see that there's potential for particular enterprises to grow. And again, keeping in mind the pandemic, we want to be able to make sure um, that your enterprise is actually visible amongst a very, very large audience. So we're also looking into partnering with other international platforms um, where you know a, a particular platform that has a reach of 100 other investors. And we're going to be partnering with them to make sure that your enterprise gains visibility amongst them as well. Um, so with that, um, I'll, I'll you know, no longer delay your time and introduce you to Mr. Chan Das, although I'm sure you're all extremely familiar with him. Um, Chand has been working very closely with Wilgro uh, for the last three years. Um, he is somebody who has an immense amount of business experience, has spent over 35 years in the corporate sector, uh, has led uh, you know, and scaled businesses both in B2B and in B2C. Um, you know, I think uh, one of his most uh, illustrious journeys has been with 
um, with ITC stationery products where he was the CEO and he played an instrumental role in actually taking Classmate, the brand that we're all so familiar with, uh, in taking it to where it is today. Um, Chan today is a CEO coach. He is an angel investor. He's a mentor, and he also serves on the board of multiple companies. Um, with Wilgro, he's been working closely with us on our Invent program, uh, which focuses on incubating other incubators. And uh, he's played a pivotal role in supporting IIT Kanpur, um, you know, strengthening their incubation processes and strategies. And we're really, really fortunate to have him with us today and to share his expertise. So without further ado, Chan, over to you. Well, thank you, Jenan. That was very gracious. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me extend a warm welcome to now nearly 230 participants who have joined this webinar. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's great to reach out to you. I have been associated with previous iPitch competitions, and I can tell you that it's a very exciting journey for every iPitch applicant. Whether you make the cut now or make the cut later, the process itself helps you sharpen your own thought process. And as I go through this uh, presentation, uh, you will see exactly why I'm saying this, right? Now, what I'd like you to do is, I understand that uh, this uh, webinar is being recorded. So I would be very happy if you could just listen to me and absorb what I'm trying to say, because there's very little written on the slides but there's a lot that I will be speaking about around the slides. Or aap mein se jo log hain jo hindi mein sawal puchna chahenge, you can always enter your question in the chat box and request a response in hindi. Mai kaafi khush hoon hindi mein bhi jawaab dene se. To aisa koi problem nahi hai. You know, I hear that you are from all over the country and I was told that virtually all the Indian states have some representation at this stage of the competition in terms of the applications, right? So a little bit more about uh, my background. Uh, so what I do now, having spent 35 years in the corporate world, I now uh, enjoy working with entrepreneurs a lot. And one of my mission, life's missions is to help entrepreneurs succeed. So the way I do it is uh, through angel investing. And so I'm an angel investor with an international angel network called the Kiritsu Forum. By the way, Kiritsu Forum is the largest angel network in the world. It has 55 chapters worldwide and four in India, right? And, uh, and you will see later in the presentation, the role that an angel investor plays in the journey of an entrepreneur. So I have invested in about 20 companies as an angel investor. And then I've been working with Wilgro as a mentor for almost four or five years now and more particularly with the INVENT program at IIT Kanpur. It was a program of social entrepreneurship, which was designed for you know, the entire Northern Belt from Rajasthan all the way to West Bengal. And uh, I was associated very strongly with the IIT Kanpur incubator. And uh, as part of that program, we were incubating about 40 social enterprises. So I got to see them very closely and participate in their uh, journey, you know, at each stage during their incubation process, right? So overall, between my angel investing and my mentoring, I would have sort of uh, checked out over a hundred social enterprises in more ways than one. 
and i have personally also invested in three social enterprises which i will talk about a little later and give you some examples using these three right so let me move on uh the way i have planned uh, the presentation today is that uh, i will be spending the first half of the presentation in talking about you know the startup ecosystem now you will be hearing a lot of names you know vc angel bootstrapping uh, ipo so i just wanted to give you a very quick overview of who these players are and what how important they are in the life of an entrepreneur in the life of a social entrepreneur or any entrepreneur okay so let me begin by uh taking you to the first slide which is the startup ecosystem and the journey stages of this startup ecosystem so it's a very simple slide it shows concentric circles or beach mein bilkul beach mein jo bulls eye ki jagah hai that is the entrepreneur so all of you who are listening to this webinar are there right in the center of this set of concentric circles okay now the entrepreneur is the one who has the idea about starting a business right and the big question is is that idea good can it be nurtured and so on and so forth it's always a good idea for an entrepreneur to look at at least one more person who can be like a co-founder you follow what i'm saying which means that instead of a single founder can you find a friend or a colleague or somebody who is able to have a very similar wavelength with you and can actually join you in this whole journey process okay because it's always a good idea to uh, for an entrepreneur to have somebody else who can complement skills so for example an entrepreneur may be very strong in the technology side but equally you need somebody who will be good at developing the business at doing customer engagement and all of those things right so anyway so the entrepreneur is the person in the center which is all of you and around the entrepreneur are a series of circles which i will now talk about so the first circle is the bootstrapping now what is bootstrapping bootstrapping basically means that the entrepreneur has an idea and goes to family and friends and says bhai ye hamara idea hai hum business shuru karna chahte hain and uh, can you help me with some funding right so these family and friends will say okay since you are asking and uh, we are not so worried about you know the idea per se but because we know you and we would like to encourage you they will give you some small amounts so bootstrapping is really the money that you can raise from your family and friends to give some shape to your idea right but remember people who are giving you this money are giving it to you because of you as a person because they like you they love you and they want you to succeed they are not at this stage grilling you about your business idea right so that's the bootstrapping part after bootstrapping we then get into something called an incubator now this is very important we'll spend a little time on an incubator wilgro for example is india's oldest and largest social enterprise incubator so what does an incubator do the analogy is from a hospital you know in a hospital jab baby 
प्रीमच्योरली बॉर्न होता है तो उसको इनक्यूबेटर में रखते हैं राइट द होल आइडिया इज दैट द बेबी इज केप्ट इन एन इनक्यूबेटर एंड इज देन लुकड आफ्टर बाय द इनक्यूबेटर स्टाफ बिफोर द बेबी इज देन रेडी टू कम आउट इन टू द बिग बैड वर्ल्ड राइट सो ऑन अ सिमिलर बेसिस एन इनक्यूबेटर टेक्स इन an entrepreneur with an idea and it helps to sharpen that idea into a marketable product because at the end of the day the product or the service must be solving a certain problem and somebody must be willing to pay for it right now so the thing is how do we get into an incubator so you have applied for the i pitch contest and if you win the i pitch contest then you will get incubated either at wilgro or at the other partner incubators so naturally uh, from the 1300 applicants it will have to be narrowed down to a small number and how is that narrowing down done that narrowing down is done on the basic strength of your idea and the solidity of your pitch and that is why the word pitch is something that an entrepreneur will keep hearing and keep needing throughout his journey right so pitch simply means you have to stand up in front of the incubator and do a presentation to them as to why your idea is something that is better than anybody else's idea right okay so we will we will get into that into what com, what constitutes an effective pitch deck but it's important to understand that the pitching process begins before you get entry into an incubator right so what the incubator does it takes you in and of course it helps you with some funding now remember this funding is given to you basically on the strength of your business idea on the strength of the social impact that your idea will create right so you will create a strong business idea and you will create a strong impact and on the strength of that the incubator will decide to admit you so when they admit you what is the kind of support they give you so the support they give you is yes they give you funding so typically the funding in an incubator is from 0 to about 50 lakhs right and you are expected to be part of the incubator for a period of 12 to 18 months okay sometimes it can go a little longer but i am giving you a typical period of 12 to 18 months so 12 to 18 months you will get maybe 50 lakh rupees but the money will not be given to you together it will be given to you on the basis of achieving certain milestones which you have to agree with the incubator team so it's a milestone based funding right so there is a team in the incubator they have portfolio managers they bring in sector experts they do diagnostic panels to help you solve your problems more effectively there is a mentor uh, from the technology side there is a mentor from the business side who the incubator gives to you and these mentors help you in sharpening your product and sharpening your marketability of that product right and maybe even helping you with ideas on how to take your product to the market so during this period that you are in an incubator you have to sharpen your product and actually take it to the market and start getting certain revenues out of it i think that is very important right okay 
So I can uh, go on about the incubator. They do many, many things, but basically it's funding, mentoring, and that's, and diagnostics, helping you to complete your product and market. The accelerator, as the name suggests, is a much shorter program, which typically happens even while you are getting incubated. So the incubator can run a, a 90 day accelerator program. This accelerator program sometimes can also be sponsored by companies. So you have, you have let's say Shell or Google or Microsoft or Cisco. There are several companies which actually run their own accelerator programs. And uh, there again, to get admitted to the accelerator program, you have to compete. And if you have to compete, you again require a pitch. So the pitch is coming again and again, uh, every time you enter a new institution, which is helping you to sharpen your idea. So the accelerator is essentially bringing the, the company that sponsors the accelerator, their management team starts interacting with you. They help you in trying to give their business network access to you and typically you know it just gives you let's say an acceleration of your incubation process so an incubation and acceleration work together right they kind of complement each other right now so let us say that you have been through an incubator and you have also got accelerated and you are now about 18 months old in your business and you are starting to generate revenues and you have some early customers who are happy with your product or service and they are giving you repeat orders. Now is the time when you want to scale up your business a little more. Take it regional or take it national or maybe even take it global, right? So that is where you require an angel investor. Now, an angel investor can be an individual, a very high net worth individual, let's say a Ratan Tata or a Nandan Nilekani or a Narayan Murthy. They can come in as an individual and they can give you the money and they are, you know, uh, single angels. Or you go to what is called an angel network like the network that I belong to, which is called the Kiritsu Forum. Now in an angel network, you have maybe about a hundred members. So imagine you're going into the angel network, applying to them. And once again, they will talk to you and get you to pitch to their members. So again, the word pitch comes, right? So you see, that you've already pitched three times. You've pitched to get into the incubator. You've pitched to get into an accelerator program. And now you're pitching to get into angel funding, right? So when you pitch to an angel network, the process is very simple. Uh, on the strength of your pitch, uh, the network uh, asks for a show of hands and uh, maybe 10 or 15 members out of 100 may be interested in investing in your company. So they put their hands up. And then what happens is the angel network team then does a deeper diligence of your company. So you will now start hearing the word diligence. Diligence means that yes, you have a private limited company. Have you been filing your returns? Is your registration, are all your papers in order? Is your statutory compliance being done? Are you paying your taxes, your GST and so on? So all of those things. So there is a lot of diligence on governance and compliance. And there is also a diligence on your business. So what happens is during this diligence, uh, some members of the angel network will talk to your customers, to your partners, to your suppliers, just to get a sense that yes, your business is actually working 
and it is worth their money to invest in your company each angel uh, member in the network writes a check let's say for 10 to 15 to 20 lakhs and overall from an angel uh, perspective you are able to mobilize about 2 to 3 crores so typically angel funding is in that region you are asking for 2 to 3 crores of money and uh, in exchange for that money you will then give a stake of your company to the angels even the incubators and accelerators will take a small stake of your company so already once you have uh, been through incubation acceleration and through an angel investor maybe 10 15% of your company is already now uh, belongs to these people the incubators the accelerators and the angels right it is usually very hard for a company to get valued at the angel investing stage so what happens is that the angel investors say ki we will wait we will give you the money but we will invest in something called a convertible share whose value will be discovered when the vc comes on board right so let's say the vc puts a value of 100 on you the angel who invests in you earlier will get a discount on that 100 price and the discount could be 20 to 30% so it could be let's say 70 would be the price that uh, the angel would convert his shares into the advantage is that you know you get time to grow your company to a stage where the vc comes in so uh, so let me talk about the further stage okay so i talked about from angel we now talk about vc so the vc is 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 again very similar to an angel the only difference here is that an angel investor is actually writing a check with his own money in the case of a vc the vc is actually sourcing many uh investors into a fund right so the fund belongs to many multiple investors and there are managing partners who manage that fund okay and these are called vc funds or they are called impact in the case of social enterprises they are called impact funds so for example wilgro itself has a fund called mentera and then there is omnivore there is uh, omidyar network these are all funds that are managed by managing partners but where there are multiple donors and typically these people will invest between a million to 3 million dollars in your company so you're talking about maybe 8 to 20 or 25 crores that's the kind of investment that uh, they will make in your company but the level of due diligence that they will do will be even higher than what was done at the angel stage and once again to get to a vc you will have to make another pitch so the word pitch comes back again every time you make a pitch you have something to talk about or something more to talk about okay so by the time you get to the vc it might take 3 4 years right for you before you become attractive for a vc to invest in your business and after vc there are other players i will not spend so much time on those but there is private equity so you hear of big names like softbank KKR, Tencent, Temasek. So there are a whole lot of foreign players, Indian players. It's a so these guys come in at very big scale. They can put in a you know fifty hundred million dollars in your company, right? But you know that takes time. That will happen maybe five seven years uh, along the journey. 
And after private equity, there could be a strategic investor. A strategic investor could be a larger company who buys you out or takes a substantial share in your company. For example, Walmart acquiring Flipkart or Baiju's acquiring White Hat Junior. So those are all examples of uh, strategic investors coming in. And finally, you could even have the option of going all the way to what is called IPO, which means taking your company public. Public means you can raise money from millions of investors on the stock market. And incidentally, there is a move which is now gaining ground, which will create a social stock exchange, right? So by the time your companies have gone five, seven, eight, ten 10 years, it may be possible that you could try and list your company on the stock market, right? That is the ultimate goal. So this whole journey, uh, you know, if I, if I take this whole journey from entrepreneur to incubator, to accelerator, to angel investor, to VC, to private equity, to strategic investor and IPO, this journey could take 10 years, right? And mind you, for a social entrepreneur, it is even more challenging because you are also expected to parallelly generate and make a huge impact in terms of social impact. Social impact means that, you know, if you're in an agribusiness, there must be enhancement of income of farmers, if you're in the healthcare business, it's about a lower cost healthcare delivery to the beneficiaries. If you're in education, it's about improving education outcomes and things like that. So, so not just running your business profitably, but also making a big business impact, right? So the challenge becomes slightly harder for a social entrepreneur as opposed to a technology entrepreneur. But the process and the journey is very, very similar. And eventually it depends on your own ambition and your own aspiration to become a national or a global player, right? So uh, I will now move on to the next part of the presentation, which is a very simple but important part of the presentation. So you heard the word pitch. I mentioned the word pitch many times uh, as I was talking to you. At each stage in your journey, you need to make a pitch. Now, what does a pitch mean? A pitch really means that you will tell every investor in the journey a great story about your company, about how well it's doing and why the investor should put money in your company, right? I mean, in a nutshell, that is what it is all about, right? Now, an effective pitch deck should not be very long, should not be very short. So we are talking about around 20 slides max. So in 20 slides, of a PPT, you have to tell your story and make and excite the investor such that he reaches for his pen and checkbook and writes you a check, right? That's the level of uh, enthusiasm that you have to generate from the investor, okay? It's always a good idea to add some visuals and graphics instead of just putting a lot of numbers, right? So that's uh, that's something that most of you know because you all are, most of you are young and have worked with multiple presentations and technologies and I'm sure you have no problem in putting a great presentation together. Okay, so what should, so what should a great pitch deck have? It should have all these things that I will now start talking about. So the first slide should talk about what is the purpose of your company? What is the vision of your company? What are you trying to achieve, right? Now, I'll give you some examples. Uh, so I have invested in three social enterprises, okay? 
And so one of them is an agri company. It's called Artisan Agrotech. And uh, they talk about a mission or a company purpose of replacing timber with bamboo-based precision engineered board for furniture and construction. Okay, so there is wood. It's going to be a wood substitute using bamboo. Bamboo, as you know, is an agri product. It can actually be grown by farmers in their fields where they are currently growing paddy and wheat and various other such crops, right? They can, they can grow bamboo, okay? So, uh, so that's an example. And also the impact has to be mentioned in the vision statement saying that while I am replacing timber with bamboo, precision engineered. In that process, I am also helping in multiply farmer incomes. So a farmer who's today generating X from per acre, X rupees per acre, if he works with, the comp with my company, over a period of time, will be able to generate three to four X, right? So that is the kind of social impact that is running parallel with the business. So that's on the company purpose. Then the second slide will talk about what is the problem that I'm trying to solve, right? So the problem that I'm trying to solve or the opportunity that I'm trying to create in this example is that, uh, you know, there is a serious uh, environment problem, cutting of trees is, is, is uh, further leading to climate change and all of those things. So instead of cutting trees and denuding our forests, can we actually grow bamboo just like we grow paddy or sugarcane or wheat, right? And create out of that bamboo a precision engineered board that can be used to make furniture or can be used in the construction industry. Right? So the problem we are trying to solve is that of degradation of climate change and of forestry, right? So that's, that's what it is. The solution in the case of this company is that the solution is actually to get farmers to plant this particular grade of bamboo. So this bamboo, the, the, the saplings, are given by the company's nursery to the farmers. They plant the saplings. And after a certain period of time, in this case, it takes about four years for the first harvest. And thereafter, the harvest happens in perpetuity. So the solution is that at the end of four years, the company buys back the produce from you, takes it to their factory, converts it into a board, and then finally converts it into finished furniture for a big customer like Ikea or for Godrej or for Walmart or you know anybody in the construction industry who can use it to make doors and windows, for example. So that's the solution. Why now? Why This is the thing about immediacy. Why are you now? Why are you getting into the business now? Okay, so you have to talk about, is the market ready? Have I done the research? Uh, you know, is there a very strong need to do this business now? Is it, is it better than, am I solving the problem in a way that is better than anybody else has solved it and so on, right? So for decent size, because remember, you are in this, you are starting this compass and you will describe it as to how, uh, what is your product and service all about. So in the case of this bamboo company, it's, uh, it's about a high girth bamboo, which is called a bambusa bamboo. The saplings are given to farmers. The product is bought back at the end of four years. It is then taken to the factory and processed and converted into finished boards, that finished board is then machined and converted into doors, windows, and ready to use furniture, which 
then goes to ikea worldwide for example right so you have to give this whole uh, idea of what is your product or service you have to describe what your product or service will do end to end okay then you will talk about your competition how you must know your competition in every market right how am i going to be different how am i going to be better how will i you know how will i win in the market the the market may be big and there may be other competitors the question is if i am coming in now i better be better than them i better be superior i better be differentiated so that i can start capturing the market on the strength of my product or service all right so that's very important to talk about competition and how i am positioned how i am superior how i am different how i am better and then you talk about your whole business model what is your raw material what is your finished product and who is your customer is it a b to c customer is it a b to b customer is it b to government is it so you know you have to think about the entire end to end supply chain of your business from sourcing raw material to delivering finished product or finished service to a b to b or a b to c customer right the whole thing has to be visualized and the whole thing has to be executed and remember the angel investor the vc the private equity guys they will land up on the ground and they will want to see evidence of your entire collaborative supply chain working end to end as i mentioned they will also talk to your customers they will talk to your suppliers they will talk to some employees they will talk to your senior managers your co-founders your bankers your auditors so uh, you know it, it it requires a lot of good planning and execution to do all of this and all of this finally translates into financials the financials typically are you know your profit and loss account and your balance sheet and how you are going to project it for the next 3 to 5 years what is the kind of income you are generating what are your expenses what is the burn rate what is your path to profitability at what volume do you break even and you know when do you start making profits right and the funding that you want from the angel or the vc or the pe what are you going to do with that fund so utilization of that fund are you going to use it are you going to use it for technology or for uh, expanding your team or for customer acquisition you have to be clear about the purpose of your funding okay so investors always want to see your business and they also want to see how you are going to spend the money in funding your business and where this money is going to go and they will be monitoring your progress very closely every month every quarter they will be sitting with you and as they are investing in you they will also demand a seat on your board so if you have a board eventually you will have a board of directors right you will start with one or two co-founders but as you get angels and vcs coming in you will have to bring in some of these people as board members so suddenly your company which you started has now got external members who are your financiers who are going to have a very big say in the way you run your company right so it's always important to consider all these things before you know going ahead and raising funding be very sure that you will be able to attract investors and also work with investors who have put money into your company and the two of you collaboratively working together will take this company into super growth right and finally you will you will introduce 
in every pitch that you do at every stage in your journey you will talk about your team your co-founders your key employees your advisors your investors your previous investors and so on all this information is required right so essentially this is what uh, uh, an effective pitch deck constitutes the number in brackets that you can see against each line item is the number of slides so for example on product or service it's hard to do it in one slide so you use maybe four slides and similarly on your business model uh, you could use about three slides financials about three slides and talk about your team in about two slides so that way you have a very effective 20 slide pitch deck which you take to investors at various stages in your business right so so just to quickly recap uh i talked about the entrepreneur going into incubation acceleration raising money from angel investors then going to a vc and then going to private equity strategic investor and maybe even to ipo and then i talked about at each stage in this journey you will need to pitch to the next investor and every time you pitch make sure that your pitch deck covers all these questions that i raised right and i can give you many examples of companies who have done a great job at preparing pitch decks and have then been able to win the investor confidence right and those who were not able to satisfy or did not have enough substance in 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 some of these items uh, immediately they were not then you know seen to be worth investing in so the investors did not uh, choose to invest in those companies so please do answer all these questions every time you get down to preparing a pitch deck the first pitch deck you prepare is is going to be not going to be the only one that's the first one throughout your journey as you move from one stage to the other you will keep adding more and more uh masala as i call it to your pitch deck based on your own experience of running your business based on your customers based on your business model based on your competitors your pitch deck has to be constantly evolving and getting better and better and better imagine i mean you have to become make yourself attractive for investors to invest their money in your company so on that note i will leave the presentation at this point and say that now what i would like to do in the next uh uh 25 minutes to half an hour uh is look at certain questions that some of you may have posted in the chat box and i will request akshita to you know collect these and read some of these out and then i will try and answer and respond to these remember this whole presentation has been recorded so everything that i have said so far is available to you and uh, this will help you every time you have a doubt just go back and look at it right so thank you very much over to akshita sure thank you so much and thank you for this wonderful session um i will just uh, begin with a few questions so we have a question from uh, harish kumar who says that you know um in terms of being an early state startup how exactly can he project his uh, financial uh, projections in the deck like how to to um, put that up in the deck how important is that as a proof of concept yeah so <clears throat> good question for an early stage investor the financials are not that important because there aren't any actually so at you know but what the what the investor will look at is the power of your idea so you must have an idea of who your customers will be 
you must have an idea of the size of the market opportunity at least an intelligent guesstimate of that of that uh, so you have to have you have to go through all the elements yes but for early stage yes financials are not that important however however unit economics are important uh unit economics means simply that whatever idea you have what price can you market it at and what is your cost of delivering that idea and therefore is there a margin available to you because if there is a margin available to you then it is worth taking the idea all the way in terms of perfecting it into a product or service and also then taking it to the customer and checking whether the customer is willing to pay for it so those things have to get addressed in your pitch deck next right um so akshay nayar writes that you know there is constantly he has observed that in terms of valuation of startups in india versus in europe there is a mismatch so the startups are valued quite lesser in india in comparison to europe so what are your inputs on that could you explain this mismatch so, and the yeah so i first of all i feel that uh, valuation should uh, get discovered only at the stage of vc funding i spoke a little while ago saying that uh, if we try to vaf get a value at incubation stage or at angel investor stage it will be unfair for both parties for the entrepreneur and for the angel investor right but by the time the company goes to the vc stage it is sufficiently large in terms of its revenues in terms of its you know number of customers its business model and there are other reference points of valuations that companies in similar size or situations have got valued at so at vc stage it is far better to get a competitive value and once you get that then as i said a discount is given on that to the angels okay and so on so i don't my advice to entrepreneurs would be that don't get perturbed about valuation till you get to the vc stage okay and at the angel stage just be happy to do a convertible note without a value right so the value happens once the vc comes in with his money right so that's next okay uh, we have vinod who says that uh, when is the ideal time to go for a startup to go for an ipo oh so <laughs> ipo is a long journey okay uh now you know it all depends if you're from a very rich family if you're part of the ambani or adani family you can go straight to ipo right <laughs> there's no problem but if you're an entrepreneur who requires funding and you have to go through this cycle and you know all these stages that i spoke about then i would say ipo is at least 10 years away 10 to 12 years away realistically speaking next right. yeah um we have rakesh who says that is it possible for a bootstrap business to raise an angel round uh, investment through angel in investors by bypassing incubation and accelerator rounds yes of course it's possible i think that's a good question and it also helps me to clarify that not everybody has to go through each stage so that's a good question you can go from bootstrap straight to angel or you can even go to vc bootstrap to vc the thing about it is you should not raise money just for the sake of raising money raise money because you really need it okay to propel your business so the answer to your question is yes bootstrapping and straight to angel or to vc got it um we have dinesh kumar who says that you know they have an ideation stage model and uh, how exactly should they present their financial model for the 3 to 5 years in their pitch deck uh well so it 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 does uh, so first of all 
it means that you should have a good understanding of the market because unless you know what is the size of the market then you can say that okay i want a small slice of that market in the first 3 to 5 years and i may not even go national i may choose to play regionally or i may choose to play within my state or within my district or whatever it is right but even there at a state you should be able to say the market size is 100 and i plan to capture a share of 3% or 5% in the first 3 years and this is how i will get there these are my competitors so the point i'm trying to make is that you can't simply go to an investor with an idea and without uh, you know a, a clear go to market strategy right so your go to market strategy may be small but it must be articulated confidently you must know your market you must know your customer b to b b to c b to government whatever it is right and build your build your uh, scale and your model and your financial projections around that nobody is asking for very huge financial projections in the beginning for an idea stage company the purpose of the incubator is to help you complete your idea and to take it to market right so early revenues idea is to start getting revenues maybe 20 lakhs 50 lakhs 1 crore at the end of 2 years or something like that okay so look at that next right uh, we have shweta who says that you know when they are generally uh, presenting their deck what are the key points that they need to focus on when they have to choose between what exactly their social enterprise does and how it does it so how much time should they um give for uh, you know focus on talking about what the enterprise does and versus how it does it it's a good question i would say that in the case of social enterprises you have to keep talking about business and impact hand in hand so right from your vision statement to the what problem you are solving what solution you are providing what is the size of the market and therefore also what is the size of the impact that you are creating potentially at each stage uh talk about business outcome and impact so i would say don't second guess this do a 50 50 literally left hand side on business impact right hand side on social impact but impact should run right through your pitch okay it's not sufficient to say impact in the beginning and only in the end talk about impact going right through talk about business and profitability going right through both are equally important the weightage a 50 50 weightage you won't go wrong okay next right we have multiple people saying that you know what is important uh, you know to be put in the deck like if if uh, for example they have multiple products so how yes. many slides you had earlier mentioned there are you know you should limit it to a couple of slides so if yeah, they have multiple plot yeah sure so if there's a product on so on product use about four slides and in, if you cannot describe your multiple products in four slides uh, i'm sorry it's too complicated the investor doesn't have the patience to listen to more than four slides so one of the things that this will train you to do is to help you summarize your thinking and your articulation and do it in four slides the most complicated product in the world can be can be presented in four slides next um so pranab asked that uh, um he requires some insights on market size validation and how exactly based on the geography and product uh, can he create that sort of a market plan for his enterprise yeah so there are many sources of uh, you know market estimation and uh, so there's a lot of secondary data there are proprietary databases 
uh, uh, there is simple primary level research where you actually uh, you know hit the ground and talk to potential customers and you try and estimate using that if yours is a retail product you can talk to members of the channel which could be distributors or retailers or dealers so there are various ways and you have to essentially triangulate this data so there's published data there is primary level generated data right all of that has to get kind of triangulated to arrive at a, a reasonably good estimate of what the market size is all about okay uh, since uh, you're unlikely to be able to afford a market research firm but you know something i mean if you get picked by one of these incubators the good good quality ones they will help you uh, you know so the mentor there and the portfolio managers there will help you to to arrive at a better way of estimating your market size right but it has to be done okay next all right um we have a couple of uh, people asking about in terms of angel investment if it's an early stage startup uh is it uh, advisable to go for to go to an in angel investment with a early idea based startup and is it okay to onboard an angel investor if there is a, a venture capitalist already involved no it it in, see in my opinion it has to be a sequential process okay so if you're going to an angel the angel comes before the vc okay it's not it's not a good idea to go to a vc and then come back to an angel i mean that's that 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 sort of just raises eyebrows right so go systematically go to an angel it's it's good to go to an angel with a baked idea you know a, a half baked idea is not likely to get uh to be attractive to fund right so when i say baked idea it means that the product has been validated and there are paying customers and hopefully some repeat customers as well right that's what an angel wants to see right and how are you executing better than your competitors so you need to know a lot about your competitors and how and why you are better right and that's very important i mean if you're hitting the indian market you need to know about indian competitors if you're preparing products for the us market you need to know about global competitors right so i take it that in the case of social enterprise because we are also looking at impact we are talking about india largely but in technology companies for example uh, the entrepreneur is needs to be aware of what the global uh, competition is all about okay so the simple answer to your question is yes idea can go to angel when it's fully baked vc should follow angel not precede angel next akshita are you there Akshita, are you there? Akshita, if you're on mute, we can't hear you. Okay, maybe I will take on the next question. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. um so shashithar bhat had an interesting question he said do you suggest to offer equity to family and friends who have supported even before incubation i think it's always a good idea it's always a good idea because uh, you know they are the guys who are unquestioningly and unhesitatingly giving you the money and they are not asking for anything in return but you need to keep a small uh, stake holding for them in your company i think it it only creates good feelings and later on when you want to raise additional funds if your venture starts taking off 
uh, they may be happy to put in more money all right so it's good to keep good good relations and i uh, my advice is yes so the answer is yes next okay um another question submitted anonymously is how do we decide when an angel investor should exit how should this negotiation be done uh, or should it be done with the investor or should we just accept what they propose so an angel investor <clears throat> doesn't really exit on his own i mean i i am an angel investor but i don't decide when i exit okay i know that uh, once the vc comes in with a series a series a is the first stage of vc funding right at that stage there is a possibility of a partial and sometimes of a complete exit for the angel right but usually usually the exit happens at series b or series c so let me say that the vc journey is not just one investment it could be multiple rounds every 6 to 12 months there could be a new round so i would say that the ideal time that an angel exits is around a series b or a series c right rarely is it fully done at series a next next all right um a question from raghu pande um how flexible do you think impact investors are in terms of assessing the impact of the startup's work um do they strongly adhere to uh, established frameworks for impact measurement yes uh, so the answer is that yes the impact investors are primarily there because they believe in impact as a very important part of their portfolio and they don't invest in let's say just technology or commercial uh, startup so they are investing because they believe and they stand for impact and in their teams they have people who actually go out into the field and do an impact assessment okay so the metrics and there are several metrics that get uh, that are used by impact investors to check whether the company is actually uh, you know going down that road and is actually delivering some of those metrics so make no mistake an impact investor will measure metrics and will measure business outcomes so it's a double whammy you have to satisfy the impact investor on both fronts whereas the technology or commercial investor is more about business and valuation right so it's a good thing after all when you are a social enterprise you have got created because because uh, you also believe in impact and that is why you are there so if you believe in impact and the investor believes in impact then yes it must be measured next right uh, i'm back <laughs> sorry for the yeah the technical issue uh, so about uh, so there are entrepreneurs who talk, who are talking about you know when they are sharing the pitch deck with us they have their entire idea exactly presented to us so in terms of uh, confidentiality what are the things um, i mean is that is that something that they need to worry about uh well i think uh, you know the, what i would like to say here is that uh, there is something called an nda which is a non declaration uh, agreement that you sign with uh, an angel network at the time of due diligence or even at an incubator level at the time of the incubator diligence right yeah so the answer is that yes confidentiality is always respected and protected by a good quality incubator or a good quality angel network right but yeah there could be the odd cases where things could leak out and so on so just be careful about which incubator and which angel network you are approaching are they are they you know professional are they uh, do they have processes that that are very strong and are they actually signing an nda with you i would say yes the answer is get an nda signed 
Next. All right. Uh, there are multiple participants who are saying that in terms of equity, um, when they're attending a competition, how exactly do they know what kind of equity they're going to get? What is it? What, what is the real ask for, from an entrepreneur? How to put a value to that? So, uh, so what happens is that, uh, so I mentioned to you that typically an incubator will give you anything from 10 to 50 lakhs, right? Usually that's the kind of range in which uh, most incubators in India operate. Now, if he gives you that kind of money, the incubator will tend to slot you uh, in three or four buckets. So let's say if it is a very idea stage, where you're, you know, you're not even a prototype is not yet ready, and your customer, you've not sort of taken it to customer yet. You are likely to get the first bucket, which means your enterprise may get valued, for example, at let's say one crore. And on one crore, if they give you say 10 lakhs, then you're giving the incubator 10%, right? Of your company right up front. But if you go to the incubator when you're already, you know, partly done with the idea and you already tested it in the field, you're likely to get a slightly higher value, maybe five crores or, or maybe even 10 crores. So it's the same thing, a 10 lakhs on 10 crores is 1%, 10 lakhs on one crore is 10%. So somewhere between 1% and 10% is what you have to part with to the incubator, right? And the thing is later on, when the incubator releases you and you go to angel and then to VC, the incubator also wants to exit. So the incubator will give up his 10% to the VC. That is how uh, every successive uh, participant or investor in your company takes on the uh, stake of the previous investor. So you don't have to keep giving away equity to everybody. Uh, the VC equity will definitely extinguish the incubator's stake, right? And that's how it typically works. Next. All right. Um, so we have a question from Akshay Nair who says, um, if an entrepreneur has an opportunity to raise funding abroad versus India, what would you recommend? <laughs> Is it better to raise funds abroad and re-enter Indian market or play regionally, purely in terms of financial buffer provided by Western investors as compared to Indian investors? Well, uh, if, you, if someone abroad is willing to fund you uh, and find you investment, uh, find you attractive to invest his money, then I would say take it because uh, remember, we are talking impact and therefore we are talking uh, working in India and therefore that investor needs to have a pretty good understanding of how impact works in India, right? So either it should be uh, one of the foreign impact investors who's had a track record of uh, working in India with other social enterprises or what happens in some cases is that some of these foreign investors appoint uh, somebody like a will grow to represent them in India, right? Because ultimately, if the investor is disengaged in your business, it's not a good thing. It's good for the investor to be engaged in your business and to help that business grow. Engage not just in funding, but in diagnostics and mentoring and all of that to help you succeed, right? And that is hard to do for an investor sitting overseas who does not have uh, eyes and ears on the ground in India. So that's my answer. Next. Right, we're actually out of time now. We've reached for we're at four fifteen now. So okay. we have about seventy plus open questions. Um, maybe we could take a few more questions and then close the session, Chand. Yeah, I'm okay to continue another five ten minutes. Uh, so just bunch them and. Uh, Let's try and address common problems that have common uh, resonance. Sure, great. Um, uh, 
So we have a question from uh, Bharat who says, how angel investors look at a startup that aim to work with government, which, okay, I mean, in terms of the government, the norms changing every five years, what happens to, uh, you know, what are the implications on a startup and the, in, the angel investors that are funding that particular startup? So the simple answer to that question is angel investors are a little apprehensive if your only customer is the government, okay? Uh, that is the truth. So they will try and push you into a situation that you de-risk your business. Government can still be 50%, but at least the other 50% needs to be uh, non-government, right? That's the truthful answer. Next. Okay. Um, just browsing through the questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. There are a couple of questions again coming in about equity. A lot of entrepreneurs find it a little difficult to understand in terms of how exactly the equity sharing takes place and even if they are at a pre-revenue stage and how do they calculate that? So I think that we so have answered that. I, yeah. I've answered that. I'll say it once more. <laughs> What I'm going to say is don't worry about it too much, okay? Because whatever equity you give your incubator, at the end of the day, the VC will uh, extinguish it, right? So it doesn't matter. Your real dialogue uh, begins with the VC. That's when you've arrived. Till angel stage, you're still, uh, you know, struggling to uh, make a viable business. So don't worry too much. Your bargaining power with the incubator is very low. And, and uh, it doesn't matter if the incubator takes 2% or 3% or 5%. It, it doesn't change anything substantially for you at this stage. So just get on with the power of the incubator. Concern yourself with what value will this incubator provide to me? What platform will it give? It will also help you with your, uh, with your brand. So if you're incubated at uh, IIT Delhi or IIT Kanpur or IIM Ahmedabad, that says a lot, right? So if they take 2% more and you know somebody else uh, takes 2% less, forget about it. Go with the best. Next. Right. Yeah, sure. um, I had a question, uh, which even uh, Lakshmi uh, had talked about. Um, so, you know, Chan, we, we keep talking about uh, demonstrating our own company's worth, you know, both in terms of the idea and how much skin in the game, uh, you know, we've actually put in um, and demonstrating why investors should trust us. Um, but what about the other way around? Uh, uh, don't you also have to think about how is it that we can build trust in the investor um, you know, how, what, what kind of questions are okay to ask uh, to actually build a sort of confidence that yes, you are working with people who ha do have your best interests in mind and who will, will be on the same page as you, at least as far as important, uh, important yes. parameters are concerned. Absolutely, absolutely. So I would say that uh, go with the top quality incubators because they have a track record of the quality of incubation. Now, what is quality of incubation? It's funding, it's diagnostics, it's mentoring, it's sectoral expertise, it's handshaking you to angels and VCs, it's uh, uh, expanding their network, helping you connect with customers using a network. Why is Y Combinator rated to be the best incubator in the world? Because they do all of these things fantastically well. Why is Vilgro one of the better, if not the best incubators in India today? Because it does a lot of these things. It runs the incubation activity by process, very strong process, right? And it has the best interests of the incubatee in mind at all times. So this that's what I was trying to say that we should not, the, the entrepreneur should not quibble about one or 2% more or less. They should go with quality incubation processes. That's my message. 
Next. Great. I think we've answered most of the questions. Um, we have, yeah, we've covered. In terms of, there was this one question about patenting their technology before they come to uh, present their model. I mean, how, what would you advise them? Well, definitely, if it is patent worthy, please patent it because that's a standard question that every investor will ask. What is your intellectual property, right? And uh, so if you, if you have it ready or patentable or even patent applied for, yes, please do mention it. That gives you certainly added uh, leverage for the technology of your product or service, right? So it's a good idea. Next. Right. Um, we have uh, Kailash who says that after seed funding, pre-series um, investor comes in, how to ensure that his shares aren't diluted more in terms of, I think, again, it's equity related. <laughs> I think yeah, most so, of these questions no, are now. So, yeah. no, so uh, it's back to the vision game. So my point again and again will be, don't worry about the valuation game till you reach VC. Okay, so at angel stage, please give a convertible note. And that convertible note will be at a discount to the price that the VC agrees with you. So why get into that argument at angel stage? Okay, that, that would be my general advice. There could be a where, you know, uh, there's already somebody who has valued the company previously, and then, you know, you have a problem of then, uh, you know, giving a convertible note thereafter and so on. But the general principle is delay the valuation till you hit VC. Right. I think uh, with that, I think we can definitely just end this session. I feel we have answered a lot of questions and definitely the video is going to, going to be available on our YouTube channel. So I encourage all of you to please visit our YouTube channel and uh, look, watch the video again. And hopefully all your questions were answered. Uh, Shant, any closing words for all of our entrepreneurs here today? Yeah, so my, uh, my advice to all of you is that uh, uh, be very rigorous with yourself, okay? Say that, look, do I have a powerful idea? Do I have the passion and the energy to translate this idea into a product or service which can be taken to a customer? And will that customer pay me for that product or service? Do I have the persistence and the perseverance to go through this entire journey that I spoke about? Will I last out for three, four years before I get VC? Will I last out 10 years before I get IPO? So, you know, as an entrepreneur, remember that you are committing yourself to a long journey, which I've just talked about. So keep Keep checking with yourself. Are you ready? And that is why I always say, find one more co-founder at least, so that there are two of you who can share your joys, sorrows, and frustrations. You will go through a lot of ups and downs in your journeys, but eventually uh, you have to keep rising at each such uh, point and continue because the journey is not so simple and it doesn't it's not going to give you a pot of gold overnight. You've got to go through these steps and go through them very strongly, very resolutely, and with a lot of perseverance. So good luck to all of you. All the best. Thank you so much, Anne. That was such a wonderful way of closing. Uh, really, really warm words. Your, your expertise and for spending time with us, uh, for spending time with 286 entrepreneurs today, um, a big thank you from Team Wilbrew. And good luck to all the entrepreneurs on your journey ahead. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you.